welcome everyone in this video I will talk about Fourier series this is the first video in the series of Fourier series <laughs> so uh, let's uh, start but in case if you are new to the channel you should subscribe the channel as well because here you will get good quality video content and here I discuss the topics in detail so it is a very informative channel for you so let's uh, start Fourier series. In many engineering problems, it is necessary to express a function in a series of sines and cosines. So basically what Fourier series gives us, a function may be given and we may be asked to express that function in the form of a series which contains the terms of sine and which contains the terms of cosine so how it is done so if you have a function f of x and if you want to uh, write the Fourier series expansion in the interval alpha to alpha plus 2c then the Fourier series of the function f of x is given by a naught by 2 plus summation n varies from 1 to infinity a n cos n pi x by c and summation n varies from 1 to infinity bn sin n pi x by c where we have these three terms that we will calculate one is a naught another is a n and third one is bn these terms are known as Fourier coefficients so how it is calculated to calculate a naught we have the formula 1 by c alpha to alpha plus 2 c f of x dx a n is calculated by using the formula 1 by c alpha to alpha plus 2 c f of x cos n pi x by c dx and to evaluate b n we use the formula 1 by c alpha to alpha plus 2 c f of x sin n pi x by c dx this uh, a formula that I have used to evaluate a naught a n and b n are known as Euler's formula so I will solve problems and that problem will help you to understand the things better. Before I solve the problems related to Fourier series, there are some important integral and sometimes I have noticed that they are asked directly in MCQ question. So I am going to talk about them and I would request you that please, uh, you know, prove the results. Uh, some of the results I am going to prove, the rest of the result you can prove. So I will be proving the first one, I will be proving the fourth one and I will be proving suppose uh, the third one. The rest of them are similar so you can prove it. So suppose uh, what is this uh, integral all about? If I have to integrate any function of cos, cos nx in the interval alpha to alpha plus 2 pi, the integration will be equal to 0 and we can directly use this as a formula. So how to do that? Suppose we have the interval alpha to alpha plus 2 pi and we want to integrate cos nx dx. So what is the integration of cos nx dx? Integration of cos nx is sin nx by n and limit of integration is alpha to alpha plus 2 pi. So if I put the limit, I will get what? I will get 1 by n and here I will get sin n into in place of x alpha plus 2 pi minus sin n alpha, right? So this I get 1 by n and here I get sin 2n pi plus n alpha minus sin n alpha and we know that sine is a periodic function with period 2 pi so this uh, sine 2 n pi plus n alpha will be basically sine n alpha i hope you uh, remember this thing from your previous class and minus sine n alpha okay so sine n alpha and minus sine n alpha will cancel so what i will get is zero so basically if i am integrating cos function in interval uh, of length 2 pi because here if you look at the interval length of the interval is 2 pi alpha to alpha plus 2 pi so its value is equal to 0 okay now let us uh, do the third result 
so if i have to do the third result here we have alpha alpha plus 2 pi and we have cos mx into cos nx dx so to integrate this what we can do we can multiply it by 2 and we can also multiply it by 1 by 2 so this 2 and 1 by 2 will be cancelled so moving ahead i can write it 1 by 2 alpha 2 alpha plus 2 pi and uh, we have the uh, trigonometric result 2 cos a into cos b so that is given by cos a plus b so that is cos m plus n x and plus cos a minus b so that is cos m minus n x and here the limit uh, you know we have to integrate it with respect to x now i'm not going to solve it further because we already have established the result that integral of cos nx dx is equal to 0 in the interval alpha to alpha plus 2 pi so if i integrate integrate cos m plus nx dx in interval alpha to alpha plus 2 pi what i will get i will get a 0 and plus if i integrate cos m minus nx dx in the interval alpha to alpha plus 2 pi also i will get 0 so the value is equal to 0 so using this result which i just established i can directly write the answer here uh, here it is slightly different so if you uh, look at the third problem or rather here uh, fourth in the list so if i have to integrate cos square nx how can we integrate the interval is alpha to alpha plus 2 pi for cos square nx we have a trigonometric formula that is 1 plus 2 cos nx by 2 and we are integrating it with respect to x the result i have used is cos square theta is equal to 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2 now here we have 1 by 2 as a constant if i integrate 1 i will get x and if i integrate uh, this uh, cos 2 nx dx again integration of cos nx is equal to 0 so what i will get is just equal to uh, 0 right in the interval alpha to alpha plus 2 pi right and here we have the limit that is uh, alpha to alpha plus 2 pi so i hope you got it integration of cos 2 nx or let me write one more steps otherwise some of you may get confused that what i am doing right it is important to write the details so let me change the color i am writing here so this 1 by 2 is there and here this integral is basically alpha to alpha plus 2 pi uh, first one is 1 dx and second integral is plus alpha to alpha plus 2 pi uh, cos 2 nx dx right so if i talk about uh, the first integral i will get 1 by 2 and here integral will be uh, x limit of integration is alpha to alpha plus 2 pi and if i talk about this integral alpha to alpha plus 2 pi cos 2 nx dx i know that is equal to 0 so now if i uh, put the limit i will get 1 by 2 upper limit is alpha plus 2 pi lower limit is minus alpha so this alpha and this alpha is cancelled what i get is equal to pi so this is the value pi so you can see that integral of cos a square nx dx is equal to pi integral of sin a square nx dx is equal to pi rest of the integral of cos nx sin nx cos mx into cos nx sin mx into cos nx sin nx into cos nx sin mx into sin nx all of them are equal to zero right remember these results may be asked two more important integral i am going to directly use this as a formula and these are very popular result you must have seen it earlier in case if you want to write the proof you should certainly write that e to the power ax sin bx the integral is e to the power ax by a square plus b square a sin bx minus b cos bx and e to the power ax cos bx is equal to e to the power ax by a square plus b square a cos bx plus b sin bx how to remember it it is very easy to remember you can see that e to the power ax by a square plus b square is common in both irrespective of whether it is e to the power ax sin bx or e to the power ax cos bx one thing that i uh, missed here i think some of you might be thinking that it should be written dx here it should be written dx here because we are integrating right 
so sorry for this mistake anyway so now this uh, how to remember if I am integrating uh, this here you can see in both cases we have a we have b we have a we have b when we are integrating e to the power x sin bx we first write sin bx then we write cos bx here we are integrating cos bx so we write cos bx we write sin bx and how to remember this plus or minus we know that if I integrate cos I get uh, sine right and but if uh, if I integrate sine I get minus cos so if you I get minus cos I write minus here this is just a way to remember uh, but important thing is that you need to remember it these are some of the most important result which I will be using most frequently in this and uh, they ask also this kind of questions in multiple choice so this is a very popular result for MCQ cos n pi is equal to minus 1 to the power n it means what that if I take n is equal to word like cos pi I will get minus 1 if I take cos 2 pi I will get equal to 1 uh, sometimes we will also come across term like cos 2n pi so that will be equal to minus 1 to the power 2n that is equal to 1 sin n pi is equal to 0 so sin for any multiple of pi is equal to 0 so suppose I write sin 23 pi that is equal to 0 I, if I write sin minus 69 pi that is also equal to 0 cos 2n plus 1 into pi by 2 is equal to 0 for odd multiples of pi by 2 cos is equal to 0 and sin 2n plus 1 into pi by 2 is equal to minus 1 to the power n so remember these results because these results are going to be very very useful for our problem solving so before I uh, solve this problem I hope you are clear about the concepts that I have introduced I have not talked much I just told you that we have to write the Fourier series like this and these are some of the important integral result right so let's uh, start and solve this problem so the question is obtain the Fourier series of the function f of x is equal to e to the power minus x in the interval 0 to 2 pi so as we have seen earlier how the Fourier series is written it is written as a naught by 2 plus summation n varies from 1 to infinity a n cos n pi x by c plus summation n varies from 1 to infinity b n sin n pi x by c and uh, if you compare the interval when I was defining this I was taking the interval alpha to alpha plus 2c so here if you compare what is alpha alpha is equal to 0 and what is alpha plus 2c that is equal to 2 pi so it means what if alpha is equal to 0 means 2c is equal to 2 pi so what we get we get c is equal to pi so in this case <coughs> sorry so in this case if I take c is equal to pi what will be the f of x so f of x which is given to be e to the power minus x will be equal to a naught by 2 plus summation n varies from 1 to infinity a n and if I put c is equal to pi this pi and this c will cancel so I will get cos n x plus summation n varies from 1 to infinity b n sin n x right now the first thing we have to calculate is a naught so what is the formula to calculate a naught I am writing it for your understanding otherwise you should write directly so the formula here is just I am showing you 1 by c alpha to alpha plus 2 c so I have got c is equal to pi and alpha is equal to 0 and alpha plus 2 c is equal to 2 pi so here I will write what I will write 1 by pi in place of c I will write pi uh, lower limit is 0 upper limit is 2 pi so alpha plus alpha plus 2 c and f of x is equal to e to the power minus x dx so I will get what I will get 1 by pi integral of e to the power minus x is e to the power minus x by minus 1 limit of integration is 0 to 2 pi so here it will be like minus 1 by pi and if I put uh, uh, like x I will get e to the power minus 2 pi minus e to the power minus 0 
so what is the value of a naught that i have got a naught i have got 1 by pi uh, 1 minus e to the power minus 2 pi i hope you understood this that here i took minus common so this minus minus will become plus e to the power minus 0 will be equal to 1 so this is the value of a naught so this is the first fourier coefficient that i have got right now the uh, next fourier coefficient that i have to calculate is a n right so how to calculate that so a n is equal to 1 by pi uh, limit is 0 to 2 pi f of x is e to the power minus x and then in the formula you see here we write cos n pi x by c right so here i will write what here i will write cos and you already have seen that if i take cos n pi x by c since our c is pi so it will be just cos n x dx i hope you got that n pi x by pi will become n x now to evaluate this we are directly going to use the very uh, standard result and what is the standard result that we have to use uh, let me uh, you know move to the next page because otherwise here it will be like uh, confusion so i am writing a n here so a n is equal to 1 by pi uh, 0 to 2 pi e to the power minus x cos n x dx so to calculate a n uh, the formula that i want to use is uh, e to the power a x cos b x dx so what is that formula i have shown you earlier also i am writing it for your convenience it is e to the power a x by a square plus b square and then we write a cos b x plus b sin b x right so if i uh, compare here my value of a is minus 1 and value of b is n so i will write 1 by pi e to the power minus x by in place of a square minus 1 square so that is 1 and plus in place of b we have n so n square and uh, a is minus 1 so i write minus cos nx and plus b is n so i write n sin nx and the limit of integration in this case uh, like uh, is 0 to 2 pi okay now the next part is to put the limit of integration so you can clearly see that here 1 by pi into 1 plus n square is constant does not depend on x so i have taken it out so uh, next we have to put the upper limit so if i put the upper limit uh, first we have to put 2 pi so i will write e to the power minus 2 pi right and here uh, we will have minus cos in place of x 2 pi so minus 2 n pi and then plus n sin 2 n pi right and then if i put 0 i will get minus e to the power minus 0 minus cos 0 plus n sin 0 so what did i get i got 1 by pi into 1 plus n square and here we have e to the power minus 2 pi cos 2 n pi is equal to 1 i told you earlier and sin 2 n pi so this term will become 0 and cos 2 n pi will be uh, 1 so this will be minus 1 and here we have minus e to the power 0 is equal to 1 and minus cos 0 that is equal to minus 1 right so what did i get this uh, uh, this thing i got this minus minus plus so i will go to 1 minus e to the power minus 2 pi divided by pi into 1 plus n square so this is our uh, fourier coefficient a n now the next thing that i am going to calculate is the fourier coefficient b n so i think now you are smart enough to write it very quickly 1 by pi 0 to 2 pi e to the power minus x and sin n pi x by c so that is sin n x dx so using the integral result which we have uh, shown you earlier 
e to the power a x sin b x so here it will be e to the power x by a square plus b square there will be a minus sign in between so i am going to write 1 by pi e to the power minus x by 1 plus n square okay and uh, then we have uh, um, uh, a sine bx so we will write minus a is minus 1 so it will be like minus sine nx and then we write minus b b is n so n cos nx and then the limit of integration is 0 to 2 pi uh, please uh, remember this result and see that how it works now I have to put the uh, limits so to put the limits I am going to write this is equal to 1 by pi into 1 plus n square that is constant and if I put the upper limit that is 2 pi uh, I will write e to the power minus 2 pi minus sine 2 n pi if I put uh, x in uh, 2 pi in place of x and then minus sine not sine cos minus cos 2 n pi this is the upper limit if I put the lower limit I will get e to the power minus 0 minus sine 0 and minus n cos 0 right so if I simplify it I will get 1 by pi into 1 plus n square sine 2 n pi so this term will become 0 cos 2 n pi so this term will become uh, 1 so I will get uh, here minus n into e to the power minus 2 pi and uh, sine 0 is equal to 0 and cos 0 is equal to 1 so we have minus n here and this is also 1 so minus minus plus so I get plus okay so in the end uh, what did I get so in the end we are getting uh, if I take n common so I will get uh, what n is being taken common so n and here 1 minus e to the power minus 2 pi right I hope you get n common so it will be plus 1 and then we have divided by pi into 1 plus n square so this is our Fourier coefficient uh, bn I hope you noticed that only difference that we are getting here is that I was getting 1 minus e to the power minus 2 pi here also we are getting 1 minus e to the power minus 2 pi n we are not getting here but we are getting n by 1 plus n square so we have got all the three Fourier coefficients now what we have to write we have to write the Fourier series so the Fourier series will be like e to the power minus x is equal to a naught by 2 so what is your a naught a naught you got uh, where it is a naught yeah a naught you got 1 by pi 1 minus e to the power minus 2 pi so I have to write a naught by 2 so it will become uh, 1 minus e to the power minus 2 pi by 2 pi right because I have to write plus 2 and plus summation uh, n varies from 1 to infinity I hope you already have noted down what is the Fourier coefficient a n so that Fourier coefficient a n was 1 minus e to the power minus 2 pi divided by pi into 1 plus n square and it was cos nx and what was the Fourier coefficient bn n varies from 1 to infinity in bn I was having n into 1 minus e to the power minus 2 pi divided by pi into 1 plus n square sine nx you can leave your answer as such but just because we are doing the first problem I want to show you that if you expand it by taking different values of uh, n it will look like what so it will be like e to the power minus x is equal to 1 minus e to the power minus 2 pi by 2 pi and here if you see uh, you can clearly see that uh, 1 minus e to the power minus 2 by uh, 2 pi by pi is independent of x so it can be taken out of the summation so I will get 1 minus e to the power minus 2 pi by pi and uh, here if I take n is equal to 1 I will get cos x by 2 right so I will get 1 by 2 cos x if I take n is equal to 2 so 2 a square plus 1 is 5 and then cos 2x I will get to 1 by 5 cos 2x if I take uh, n is equal to 3 so I will get what I will get uh, 
3 square is 9 plus 110 so I will get uh, 1 by 10 cos 3x and so on there are infinitely many terms and plus here uh, again I can take 1 minus e to the power minus 2 pi divided by uh, pi outside and uh, in this case if I take n is equal to 1 I will get 1 by 2 sin x plus if I take n is equal to 2 here it is n so I will get 2 and n square plus 1 is 5 sin 2x if I take n is equal to 3 I will get 3 by 10 sin 3x and so on so this is how the Fourier series expansion of this function will look like so one thing you have noted that during integration you need to be very very careful otherwise if you make a mistake here and there in plus and minus you will make the mistake in the whole expansion okay so let's uh, talk about something very important and I will take more problem on this but this is a kind of MCQ alert lot of questions are asked from this idea in multiple choice question so before that uh, before I take any problems I am just going to talk about this odd function and even function so you look at the definition a function f of x is said to be even if f of minus x is equal to f of x this is the definition of even function for example cos x sec x x square are all even function I can write x to the power 4 I can write x to the power 2n because if you take for example f of x is equal to x square then what is f of minus x that is also equal to minus x square which is equal to x square so that is nothing but f of x so you noted that in this case we are getting f of minus x is equal to f of x so if a function satisfies this property this function is known as even function and the even function has a very a special characteristic that this even function is symmetrical about the y-axis so you can see if you look at this graph from the graph itself I can visualize that this is the graph of an even function for example if you just draw the graph of y is equal to x square you must have seen it earlier also the graph of y is equal to x square looks like this so you can see that this is also symmetrical about y axis similarly what is the definition of an odd function a, a function is said to be an odd function if f of minus x is equal to minus of f of x for example if I take the example of f of x is equal to x cube and then what is f of minus x that will be equal to minus x cube which is equal to minus x cube and this is nothing but minus of f of x so this is an example of an odd function odd function is uh, actually symmetrical about the origin so if you see you have a point here this is your origin so if you have a point here you get a point on the curve on in this side so basically this origin is reflecting this point here if you have a point here so this point will be reflected in the origin and you will have a corresponding point here right I can draw on another graph this is a very popular graph y is equal to uh, x cube graph this is the graph of the function y is equal to x cube so you can see that it is also symmetrical about the origin if you have a point here then uh, this is the you know origin and symmetrically you will have a point here on the curve also so uh, the graph of uh, odd function is symmetrical about origin we will be using this in the coming videos also and graph of even function is symmetrical about y-axis examples I already have told you uh, sin x is an odd function because you remember sin of minus x is equal to minus of sin x tan x is also an odd function because tan of minus x is equal to minus of tan x if I write a function like ft is equal to 2t square plus 6 so this is an even function because f of minus t will also be equal to 2t square plus 6 okay uh, there are few important observation first is that product of two odd function is an even function for example if I take f of x is equal to x and g of x is equal to sin x so both of these functions are odd function but if you define their product that is x sin x this will become an even function okay 
similarly the product of two even function is also an even function this is very obvious for example if you take f of x is equal to x square and g of x another function is equal to cos x both these functions are even function because cos of minus x is equal to cos x so x square cos x is also an even function but if you take one even function for example if you take a function f of x is equal to x square and if you take another function which is odd like for example sin x then x square sin x will be an odd function why because in x square sin x if you put minus x square and sin minus x you will get what this will give you x square but sin minus x will give you minus sin x so you will get minus x square sin x so this will become an odd function so remember this result okay moving ahead i am going to solve the second problem in the fourier series okay so this is our problem next problem obtain the fourier series for the function f of x is equal to x minus x square in the interval minus pi to pi so first thing i want you to notice if you compare it uh, with the interval alpha to alpha plus 2c here alpha is minus pi and alpha plus 2c is equal to pi right so what is the length of the interval so basically 2c will be equal to what 2c is equal to pi minus alpha so that is pi plus pi pi minus minus pi so i will get 2 pi right and so from this i get c is equal to pi actually i was looking for the value of c you don't have to do all this calculation i have just uh, done that for your understanding you can clearly see that the length of the interval is pi minus pi that is 2 pi so if you compare it with the 2c c is equal to pi so the fourier series x minus x square uh, for, for uh, this uh, function what will be the fourier series i write it a naught by 2 and uh, summation n varies from 1 to infinity a n and you write cos n pi x by c i write it you write cos n pi x by c but here you see got you uh, c is also equal to pi so this will cancel so you just get a n cos n x and summation n varies from 1 to infinity you will get b n sin n x okay so um, how to calculate this coefficient Fourier coefficient a naught so to calculate a naught I will write 1 by pi f of x uh, that is x minus x square dx and I have to integrate it from minus pi to pi see you can integrate it directly also but I just want to introduce the idea of even an odd function so uh, this may be like uh, you know you possibly may think that it is like time consuming or possibly uh, taking more time but uh, I just want you to appreciate the beauty because in the next you will see that it will become uh, it will make the problem easier so what I am suggesting is that this integral uh, can be written as minus pi to pi x dx and minus uh, minus pi to pi x square dx and I want you to recall two very important results of uh, definite integration so this is important I am writing it so the result is uh, if I have to integrate something from minus c to c f of x dx then it will give us uh, there are two possibility one is 0 and another is 2 times 0 to c uh, f of x dx so I hope you remember this is equal to 0 when f of x is an odd function when f of x is odd function okay and uh, this will be equal to 2 times when f of x is even function even function okay so uh, here in this particular problem you can clearly see that x is an odd function so I just can write 1 by pi and this integral will become 0 and x square is an even function so this can be written as 2 times 0 to pi uh, x square dx so here minus 2 by pi will be out and x square will give you x cube by 3 limit of integration is 0 to pi so I will get minus 2 by pi upper limit will give me pi cube by 3 
and lower limit will give me 0 so no need to write so in the end I will get a naught is equal to uh, minus uh, 2 by 2 pi a square because this pi and pi cube will cancel minus 2 pi a square by 3 okay so this is our Fourier coefficient a naught next we have to calculate the Fourier coefficient that is a n so a n will be what it will be 1 by pi again minus pi to pi uh, f of x is equal to x minus x square cos n pi x by c so that will be nothing but cos n x dx and again using this uh, property that I discussed in the previous uh, slide so what it will be it can be written as minus pi to pi uh, x cos n x dx and uh, it, it can also be written as like minus pi to pi and x square cos nx dx okay now uh, again you see that x is an odd function and cos nx is an even function so odd into even will become odd so this integral the first integral will become 0 so I will get 1 by pi and the second integral will become what uh, it will become let me write minus uh, 2 times 0 to pi uh, x square cos nx dx okay which I can write in turn that minus 2 by pi this will be multiplied 0 to pi x square uh, cos nx dx now we have to use the formula of integration by parts in case if you have doubts in integration by parts let me know in the comment section I can create a separate video for integration as well so here uh, integration by parts uh, you need to look at the function and it should appear in this form I L A T E so here a x square is an algebraic function and cos nx is a trigonometric function so it is in the right order this is the first problem I am doing so I'll be writing the detail um, as you uh, become mature you can uh, you know directly write your answer also but since I'll be writing the detail for everyone to understand so it will be slightly more time consuming but anyway understanding is more important so I take x square as the first function I integrate the second function that is cos nx dx minus integration of again integration of the second function that is cos nx dx into differentiation of the first function that is d by dx of x square and then this entire thing is integrated again with respect to x here the limit of integration is 0 to pi so this will give me what this will give me minus 2 by pi integration of cos nx is sin nx so x square sin nx by n and uh, in case for our convenience I can put the limit here 0 to pi minus uh, if you look at this uh, integration of cos nx dx again I already have integrated here so it is sin nx by n differentiation of x square is 2x dx and for this also the limit of integration is 0 to pi okay now uh, if you look at this first term what did you note that if you put the upper limit it will be you, you will have a term sin n pi here if you put n is equal to uh, x is equal to pi so sin n pi will become 0 and if you put x is equal to 0 then of course 0 into anything will make it 0 or sin 0 is also 0 so this term will vanish both will become 0 minus 0 and here you will get minus 2 by n as the constant outside and you will have the integral that is x sin nx dx limit of integration is 0 to pi I think those who have studied definite integral earlier they might be aware that in the beginning itself I was aware that since we have x square we have to apply integration by parts twice so here we have minus 2 by pi here we have minus 2 by n so it will become 4 by n pi and then integration from 0 to pi x sin nx dx should I write directly or should I write the detail so okay let me write the detail because you need to understand it better so I take x as the first function integration of sin nx dx 
limit age 0 to pi and minus integration limit is 0 to pi uh, integration again of sine nx dx into differentiation of x right and this entire thing is being integrated so I get what I get 4 by n pi and here I will get minus x cos nx by n limit is 0 to pi and here if I integrate sin nx dx I will get again minus cos nx by n this is a minus so it will become plus and I have 0 to pi uh, cos nx by n dx since we don't have a space I need to move to the next page okay but make sure that you uh, keep these results in mind so what I will get I will get 4 by n pi and just I want to show you that what I have done here in this so if I put the upper limit the first is minus pi cos n pi by uh, you know n so I will write minus pi cos n pi by n and if I put the lower limit a uh, 0 here uh, x will become 0 so everything will become 0 right so that is it and if you look at the second term we have cos nx by n so if I integrate cos nx I will get sin nx by n so it will become 1 by n square sin nx so I write plus 1 by n square sin nx and for this the limit of integration is 0 to pi so in this if you put the limit uh, x is equal to pi you will get sin n pi so it will become 0 and if you put 0 sin 0 will become 0 so only thing that I will be left with is equal to 4 by n pi and minus pi uh, cos n pi is minus 1 to the power n that I told you earlier it is very useful and important so I write n here and you can see that this pi and this minus pi cancel so I will get what I got a n is equal to uh, minus 4 by n square and then minus 1 to the power n right we can also write it 4 by n square and minus 1 to the power n plus 1 so this is my Fourier coefficient that is uh, a n the next Fourier coefficient that I have to calculate is b n so b n will be 1 by pi integration from 0 to uh, not 0 to pi rather minus pi to pi so let me uh, remove this part because we are taking the limit from minus pi to pi and we have uh, x minus x square sine uh, nx dx n pi x by c will become sine nx dx now should I write directly this time this time if you see x is an odd function and sin nx is an odd function so x sin nx will be an even function but x square is even sin nx is odd so x square sin nx will be odd so this term will uh, give you the integral 0 so should I write directly at this time this is 0 to pi limit of integration will become 0 to pi x uh, sin nx dx property of definite integration x sin nx is even so this will become 0 to pi two times and I have written that the other integral will become 0 so now I am going to write this integral directly so 2 by pi how to integrate x sin nx dx so x integration of sin nx so now you can write directly cos nx by n and then minus right and then again integration of sin nx so that will make it plus so integration of uh, uh, cos nx by n dx by dx will become 1 so it will become sin nx by n square uh, at this level possibly you should be able to write like this in case if you have uh, got any doubt please write all the details and complete it right so 0 to pi I put now if I put the limits I will get what I will get uh, 2 by pi and uh, if I put x is equal to pi I will get minus pi cos n pi by n and if I put x is equal to 0 
in this term I am focused on this term then I will get everything 0 now if you go to this term if you put x is equal to pi the first upper limit cos n pi th this sorry sin n pi so this will become 0 and sin 0 will also become 0 so the everything will become 0 so basically we got bn is equal to you see this pi and this minus pi is cancel right and uh, uh, what I will get I will get uh, minus 2 by n this pi and this minus pi is cancel and then cos n pi cos n pi so basically the bn that I got is uh, minus 2 by n minus 1 to the power n which you can write is 2 by n minus 1 to the power n plus 1 okay now uh, just uh, in case if you want to expand it I'm going in, in the next page because uh, otherwise it will be uh, confusing here so if I have the Fourier series x minus x square what is the a naught I have got so a naught I have got where did I get a naught I think in this page yeah sorry here I got a naught so a naught is equal to minus 2 pi a square by 3 so a naught by 2 will be minus pi a square by 3 plus summation n varies from 1 to infinity and what is the a n I have got a n that I have got is equal to in this page my 4 by n square minus 1 to the power n plus 1 so I write 4 by n square minus 1 to the power n plus 1 cos nx and plus summation n varies from 1 to infinity and bn that I have got is minus uh, 2 by n minus 1 to the power n plus 1. So 2 by n minus 1 to the power n plus 1 sin nx. Okay. So in the expanded form it will look like x minus x square is equal to minus pi a square by 3 and uh, if you uh, write in detail if you take n is equal to 1 you will get 4 by 1 square and this will become positive you will get cos x if you take n is equal to 2 it will be 4 by 2 a square with a minus sign cos 2x if you take n is equal to 3 3 plus 1 will become 4 so it will become positive 4 by 3 square cos 3x and so on and if you uh, look at the next term it will be like 2 by 1 positive sin x minus 2 by 2 sin 2x plus 2 by 3 sin 3x and so on so in, in in simplified form it will look like x minus x square is equal to minus pi square by 3 I can uh, take 4 common so I will take 4 cos x by 1 square minus cos 2x by 2 square plus cos 3x by 3 square and so on and if you write this you can take two common so you'll get sin x by 1 minus sin 2x by uh, 2 plus sin 3x by 3 and so on so this is uh, the way to expand it one thing I want you to notice because in some of the questions it may be asked to do that also so in this expansion if you take x is equal to 0 so what will you get in the left hand side you will get 0 minus 0 square that is equal to 0 and in the right hand side you will get minus pi a square by 3 plus 4 if you take x is equal to 0 all this cos 0 will become 1 so you will get 1 by 1 a square minus 1 by 2 a square plus 1 by 3 a square and so on and all the sine terms will become 0 0 minus 0 so this whole bracket will vanish right so now you can see it you will be able to conclude that 1 by 1 square minus 1 by 2 square plus 1 by 3 square minus 1 by 4 square and so on is equal to what you take pi square by 3 in the other side and then you divide it by 4 so it will become pi square by 12 so they may also ask you that write the Fourier series expansion and using that deduce that this is equal to pi square by 12 okay so we are already into the like uh, 
uh, this this uh, kind of uh, mm, completed this problem now there is one more problem so should I continue with this also because it will take me some time so okay let me uh, continue this uh, problem or I better I am leaving this for you to complete right so uh, what I am suggesting you that uh, I'm um, doing the uh, main part of it and uh, rest of the part you can do it right so here you can write one square so uh, if you have to write the Fourier series expansion for this function that f of x is equal to uh, 2x minus x square and uh, what will be the Fourier series expansion f of x is equal to 2x minus x square here alpha is equal to 0 and alpha plus 2c is equal to 3 so it means what that 2c is equal to 3 so the c value that is what I wanted you to understand is 3 by 2 so if you write the Fourier series f of x minus x square it will be a naught by 2 plus summation n varies from 1 to infinity a n cos and then you write n pi x by c so it will be what it will be n pi x by c c value is 3 by 2 so it will be cos 2 n pi x by 3 and plus summation n varies from 1 to infinity b n sine 2 n pi x by 3 okay so in this case to calculate a naught what formula you have to use you have to use the formula 1 by c so 1 by 3 by 2 1 by c is 1 by 3 by 2 so that will be 2 by 3 integral of 0 to 3 2 x minus x square dx evaluate this and let me know in the comment section what will be a n so a n will also be 1 by c so that will be 2 by 3 integral from 0 to 3 and here you will have 2x minus x square and cos 2n pi x by 3 dx this integral you have to calculate and don't uh, you know get intimidated by this integral just uh, use integration by parts you will be able to do and similarly if you have to write bn it will be equal to 2 by 3 limit of integration 0 to 3 the function is 2x minus x square sine 2n pi x by 3 dx so you should be able to evaluate the value of a naught a n and b n and then you should be able to write the Fourier series expansion and after that you should be able to you know uh, deduce this also like I have suggested so complete this problem and in the coming video I'll be talking about Dirichlet's condition for Fourier series expansion I will also be talking about how to write the Fourier series expansion in case the function has discontinuity and uh, uh, how to write the sine series of a given function or how to write the cosine series of a given function so there are many things that we are going to talk in the coming videos so this is all about this videos I uh, hope you have uh, watched the video in the detail and what is one thing that I suggest you that whenever you are watching the video don't watch like you are watching a movie just keep a pen and paper handy with you and whenever I am solving a problem pause the video try to write your own steps and then match whether you are making any mistake or whether you can improve on that what I am doing if you think that you can do it in a better way you should also try to uh, you know inform me in the comment section so that's all uh, I was getting a lot of requests for Fourier series so I'll be uploading other videos also possibly in the next two, uh, two videos uh, I'll be able to complete this topic as well so that's all. Thank you and have a great day.